so many good things. And she's an excellent intercessor. So I love her. And I'm really glad that she is here today. Um, she's attended Women's of Bow um, since 1980. And God has called her to be an intercessor, to pray over the cities of Chicago and Mesa, to pray for churches, pastors, and their spouses. He also called her to minister to women. Our father also told her that he would take her to places that no one else would go, could go, and to reach women that no one else could, no one else could find. Can I introduce? Go to confession first. 
Confession was always available before each Mass, so we had time to clean up our conscience beforehand. When we entered the church, we had to anoint ourselves with the holy water, making the sign of the cross. When we walked into the sanctuary, we walked up to the altar, genuflected before the tabernacle, making the signs of the cross in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we entered a pew, we had to kneel down and pray the Our Father prayer. We often prayed the beaded rosary with different prayers. We always had a rosary in our pocket. We were all called to strict reverence of God in church. It was a very holy place where the Blessed Trinity resided. Silence was golden. We memorized the Apostles' Creed, a prayer of salvation, the Our Father prayer, the Hail Mary prayer, the Glory Be prayer, and prayers of confession for our sins, and also prayers for repentance, followed by penance outside the confessional. We prayed in school every day, before, during, and after meals. We went home and prayed with our families when possible, even when we walked down the street. I wanted to be a nun and go to Nicaragua. My father said, absolutely no. <laughs> father knows best. Eventually, those beautiful nuns who went before us were raped and murdered. My brother wanted to be a missionary. Again, my father said no. So he went to Quaker College in Chicago to become a priest. One day, my brother and his best friend, Paul, decided to ditch school. He told me to keep quiet and not to tell my parents that he would give it to me. He was kind of a bully. Needless to say, that morning we had our first train ride ever in Chicago on the L train, and it was the one that he should have been on. That was God's mercy. Praise God for his mercy. Amen. He was immediately kicked out of school. He missed his calling later, but his daughter became a pastor to make up for his spiritual lineage. Back to prayer. <clears throat> I always prayed to God, Jesus, Mary, and sometimes Joseph, but was never sure how to pray to the Holy, Holy Ghost. I saw him as some type of Casper, the friendly ghost. I was so happy later when that all changed his name, when, later when he changed his name, they changed his name to the Holy Spirit. In my 30s, Benny Hinn changed all that for me. I fell in love with the Holy Spirit and was no longer afraid of him. He became God the Holy Spirit, my friend, my counselor, my guardian, my advocate, my guide, my helper, my teacher. He was everything to me. I learned that the Holy Spirit prayed perfect prayer to the Father for me. Through a series of traumatic events in my family, at 13 years old, I stood in front of my parents' restaurant on the corner of Dempster Street in Skokie, often called Little Jerusalem. I was praying to God and telling him that I wanted to hate Jewish people who lived in the city because I thought they destroyed my father's property, his business, and his health. I took up my father's defense upon myself, and I was really wrong. I cried out to God aloud with tears running down my cheeks standing on the street corner. I said, Lord, I hate these Jewish businessmen, but I can't hate them because Jesus is Jewish, and I love Jesus. Oh, God, forgive me for all my sins, especially the sin of hatred. Help me, Lord, to love the Jewish people the same way that I love your people. Little did I know, 17 years later, my husband and I would own an Italian restaurant already in operation down the street three or four blocks away. I was always staying in repentance through my teenage years. I just grew up too fast. I went from Frank Sinatra to Elvis Presley in eighth grade and on to Age of Aquarius in high school. Just do your own thing as long as you don't hurt anyone. Everybody remember that one? Mm -hmm. The Vietnam War was on, and fear of Russia sending a nuclear bomb our way was a sign of the end for us kids. At a Sweet 16 party, I met the love of my life. I lied my age and with a false birth certificate got married at 15 years old. <laughs> After all, I was mature and I knew more than my parents' generation. My new handsome husband soon informed me that he had joined the paratroopers, the 82nd Airborne in North Carolina. What a shock that was for me. I soon found out I was pregnant and alone. I was a junior in high school and had to quit mid-year. It was an incredibly sad time for me. I worked quite a few jobs, mostly restaurants. I looked older and had experience and remembered I had a false birth certificate to use. <laughs> Having a child was the greatest blessing that gave me a beautiful baby boy. I asked the Lord, what should I name him? He said loud and clear to me, name him Michael after Michael the Archangel. For I will raise him up to do great and mighty things for my namesake, you know not yet. I had him circumcised by a doctor rabbi on the eighth day, not even knowing what it meant in Judaism. I thought it was a good help, Mazel tov. Michael was the most beautiful baby, and I loved him so much. 
I had him baptized in the Catholic Church at six weeks old. She was in great godparents, my brother Nick and my best friend Liz. If I died, I promised to raise Michael in the Catholic faith. I knew he would go to heaven. My husband was discharged from the army and became a playboy and the leader of the pack, ending our marriage of all four years. I went to work with a friend's parents, waitress in an Italian restaurant temporary until he found someone. My boss, Vince, used to say to me, don't you worry about that thing, the younger lady. You worry about it, get her married. <laughs> I did not attend much church, but taught my son to kneel and pray to God every day. I bought this huge Catholic uh, action Bible, red leather, right after Michael's birth. I would try to read it, but the King's English was hard to understand, so I would show him the beautiful pictures instead, always polishing the leather cover and displaying it proudly on my coffee table. Often my boss, Vince, would say to me, don't you worry about a thing, you young lady. We just worry about it getting married. One day, my boss's friend, Lou Ferrino, came to visit him with his son, Vincenzo, who had just arrived from New York. At that time, I didn't know he was an illegal alien who jumped ship more than once, possibly three times. <laughs> he dazzled me and courted me and asked my father for my hand in marriage. My father said, yes, finally. This is the man you gave, this is the man for you and gave us his blessings. We planned a church wedding, but we had to get married at City Hall quickly. The immigration was looking for him and wanted to arrest him for jumping the ship in New York. <laughs> he was a seaman who sailed multiple ships all over the world. Oh God, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Throughout all these years, I would kneel down and cry out to God for forgiveness of my sins and repent. I would promise with all my heart to change and to obey him. It would last for about six months. I would do it all over again, mostly after Christmas and Easter. Yet still, I knew, I did not know the word of God and the Holy Scriptures. I now gave birth to my second son, Lou Ferrino. He was so tiny and beautiful, what a treasure he was. At birth, the doctors rushed to get him to start breathing, and he was turning blue. I yelled out to God to help him to live. I could not see him, but I could hear the panic in all of their voices. Suddenly, I heard a loud scream. He, he was wailing with a deafening cry. They allowed me to see him for just a moment and rushed him away. I named him after his grandfathers, Lewis and George. He also was circumcised by Dr. Rabbi on the eighth day in the hospital, Bible talk. We chose Vince's brother Enrico and sister Maria for his godparents. They also promised to raise him Roman Catholic, so I knew he would go to heaven. Both of my sons were born six weeks premature. So every time I prayed the formal prayers of a Catholic, I also had long conversations with God. During my pregnancy with Louis, the doorbell rang, and it was the immigration coming to arrest my husband. <clears throat> Fortunately, right after we were married with a great Jewish lawyer, he turned himself into the immigration. The wonderful immigration officer who helped us put my husband's records aside, they were not found for a long time. Just after Louis' birth, my husband came home and announced that he bought a restaurant next to a nightclub serving drinks from their bar on consignment. We had access through a swinging door to the club. I was shocked and angry. Back on my knees again, I cried out to God. Oh God, what have we gotten ourselves into now? Please help us. Now we lived with my parents and they watched the kids for us and we started work seven days a week, 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning, every day. To my demise, the immigration found out those lost records and ordered Vince to go back to Italy soon. I had to return to the restaurant at 20 years old and I was heading for a breakdown. I had, to re I had to recall him back and it took almost six months. I prayed to the Lord, why do I always have to suffer with this man? In the meantime, I would pray to God and he would give me his peace and his strength to go through each day. Every day a young lady would come in around 4 p.m. and just sit and drink water. She did not want anything to eat. She just sat there and would stare in outer space. I would try to talk to her, but she remained silent. I would try to comfort her, but she did not react. One day I sat down with her and told her, no matter what your problem is, Jesus can fix it for you. She started to cry and wail. I was so scared I did not know what to do. I tried everything that I could think of or say to do. I ran to the back office and prayed asking God for help. She would come back every weekday and finally one day she started to talk to me. Slowly she began to trust me and knew that I would not hurt her. The Lord opened up a new chapter in my life and I began to minister to her God's love. I was still learning myself. A priest authored a book called Many Sparrows Have Wings. 
in it, you taught me to love others unconditionally and to be patient and kind to my customers. Some of these customers were real nightmares, believe me. I listened and learned from each person that I spoke with. I'm a great listener to this day, one of my gifts and patience. This young lady was a special person and I just began to love her more and more. Her name was Debbie. Debbie finally let me pray for her. I found out that she was from a nearby institution for mentally challenged and a long-term patient. She was married and had three children who were staying with her, her husband and her in-laws. She was severely depressed and felt hopeless. I prayed for her daily and she would visit me at the restaurant sharing, me, sharing her life story with me. When she was young, she studied piano. She was an artist who would also model at the Chicago Art Institute for extra money. She was alive and full of life, finally settling down and getting married. Unfortunately, her husband was a violent and jealous man who abused her often. No one would help her. That was back in the 60s. And she grew more hopeless and helpless. Finally, she had a nervous breakdown and she crashed. She was committed to this mental institution where she was confined for several years. As she began to improve, they would let her go out for a couple hours each day for a walk. She shared with me how she had, how they had castrated her so she could not have any more children. Apparently in those days, this was a common practice in those types of institutions. She also told me how the orderlies would come into her room in the dark of the night and rape her almost on a daily basis. She would call out for help and no one would answer her. No one would believe her, but I did. I knew she was telling the truth. She started to improve so much that the staff in charge wanted to meet with me. They wanted me to explain to them exactly what I said to her bringing about her healing. I said no. <clears throat> I did not respect them nor trust them. However, I knew that it was Jesus, our healer. Eventually, she was able to go home. Unfortunately, her parents were on welfare and her husband threatened to turn them into the government if they tried to help her. They were afraid to take her home for fear of retaliation. I didn't know what to do, so I decided to take her home with me. We lived with my parents. They were not happy with me and wanted her out. I prayed and asked God what to do. So I called her parents and asked them if they loved their only daughter because she needed them right now. They came over to visit and cried aloud saying they were sorry and would stand up to her husband no matter what the circumstances would be. They came back and took her home, praise the Lord. One day they invited us over for dinner. You would not believe it, but it was a savory dinner. They were all, they were Jewish. Debbie's father prayed the most beautiful prayers and blessed us and asked God to take care of us always. I was so happy for her and she just looked beautiful and alive. She found legal help, went to court, and fought to see her children after so many years. These advocates helped her to find a home of her own. They helped her to get a job. Then she was able to visit her children and in-laws. <coughs> Later, she could bring her children to visit her home for the weekend. Eventually, the courts granted her total custody of her children. What a victory of Jesus it was. Mm -hmm. It was the greatest joy to see how Jesus changed her life. As time passed, I did not hear from her any longer. One day, the phone rang, and it was Debbie. She said, listen, this is for you. I heard the most beautiful concerto being played on the piano to me. After so many years, Debbie was now back again playing piano full time, but this day it was just for me. Jesus won the victory, hallelujah. His Jewish daughter's life was totally restored. Praise be to God forevermore. I was 20 years old at that time. Years passed on to more restaurants, on to more prayer stories. During the 60s, one day on TV, I heard this new person speak of those Catholic charismatics speaking in this new language called tongues. The camera zoomed in on them, and they were worshiping and singing with tongues in the Holy Spirit. I never had heard anything so beautiful in my whole life. It sounded like a choir of angels. I said, Lord, I do not know what it is, but I have to have it. It took me until the 70s when my friend came from Arizona to work for me. She went to a prayer meeting in the Catholic high school with the nuns who prayed in the back rooms. They were teaching the life of the Spirit seminar. She was filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, a holy prayer language. She then heard them singing in the Spirit. It was so unbelievably beautiful. She knew that it, it was what I was looking for all those years. She came back to my house and shared the teaching with me. One day I was watching a Christian program. A lady was sharing the testimony of healing. She had been in a terrible car crash and the bones in her legs were shattered. 
She was a Christian woman who was going to run for Miss America. Through much prayer, God had wrapped a cocoon of calcium around her fragmented bone and healed her leg. She was still two inches short. So then she went to Kenneth Hagin's healing service in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Where while up on stage, God grew her leg up two inches. She went on to become Miss America, a famous lady today, right? I was so full of joy that I started to praise God, yelling, Hallelujah, 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 I'm the A-H-C-K-R. And just then I started speaking in tongues of the Holy Spirit on my knees. I was so elated that I kept praying and singing in tongues, worshiping the Lord. The next day the devil said to me, I was just imagining it, so I stopped for a week. My friend Pat came back and straightened me out real quick and told me the devil had to leave. When I resumed praying in tongues again, it was different, not like the sound of the choir of angels, but warm tongues. <clears throat> I became part of a charismatic movement in the Catholic Church, meeting in the back rooms with lay people, some nuns, and priests. The power was so great. I started to read my first Bible, St. Joseph's Catholic Bible. I didn't trust any other Bible. I did not trust any other editions. I met this wonderful lady named Genevieve. She took me under her wings and mentored me for years. She wanted me to have a Bible study at her home, but her husband said no. I then asked my husband if I could have a Bible study at our home, and he said yes. The first night with several ladies, Jen called and could not come. She said, so you handle it. I didn't know the Bible, so I said, well, let's pray instead a study. God gave me the name for our prayer group, Shema, O Hero Israel, the Lord, the God of Saints. Every week we would pray and write down the request only to come back the next week with all our prayers and all of our prayers at the end. Jen never did come back to our meetings because of her husband. More ladies came and it was getting so exciting to see our prayers answered each time. We would dance and sing and pray and would praise and worship God. Every week before the meeting I would go to the Christian bookstore and pray and asking Jesus what book to read. Each week whatever was in that book was exactly what we needed to know to help us in that meeting. One week I read a witchcraft. This lady from Puerto Rico was down to 90 pounds and looked like death over her. She told us her mother and aunt both were witches and cursed her all the time because she would not join them. That night was different, the prayer meeting. We only sang praises to God. After about 45 minutes, we sat, down, sat her down to pray for her. I said, Baldy, can you say the name of Jesus? She seemed muzzled and would not answer. I said to her in the same response, shaking her head. On the third try, a lady named Peggy said there was a large black shadow over her, whispering in her ear, telling her not to speak. I got so mad at this demon, and God's righteous anger rose up in me, and I shouted to that demon and told her, come out of all the, get out of my house in Jesus' name. Amen. And he left. Amen. He came out, and all the flew forward on the floor, screaming, Jesus, 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 over and over again. We all were so shocked, scared, and so very happy that we hugged her and all rejoiced and sang and danced and praised the Lord. All they eventually did gain weight and became a great Christian today. Amen. No one wanted to go home that night. It was the end of the prayer meeting. Not, any, not that meeting, but it was the end of all of our prayer meetings. The very next day, God spoke to me in his word and said, Assemble yourself with other believers. My son Michael came home and told me about a meeting his friend's mother had from Park Ridge meeting in, <clears throat> in the hotel. We started to go there, and he took me with him. It seemed like they met every night there. It was part of the new faith movement. It was on fire for God, signs, wonders, and miracles in every service. It was the assembly of God's church, directed by Lester Summerall in Indiana. Now I had to learn to read the King James Version. Jen was now able to go, so she would pick me up at the restaurant after the dinner hour had died down. And off we'd go in a big red Cadillac off the face of me. <laughs> we were so angry for God. We were so hungry, I'm sorry. We were so hungry for God on fire and always praying in the Holy Spirit with signs, wonders, and miracles following. So many people would come there and get saved. One time we were meeting during the four, we were meeting during the day, four hours a day, five days a week, praying in various forms of the Spirit of types of prayers. At night, we would go back to church and all see our prayers answered in the service. There were, so, there were also intercessors praying downstairs underneath the service in the hotel. 
who was a powerful woman of God. We found a church in some church building and started to started a Bible school. I could not go and was so angry because I had to work in a restaurant. God heard my cries. Each day at the restaurant, God would send someone to speak to me, and I was able to pray with them behind the service bar. That's right, I had to become a bartender because the other one quit. I was so upset when a waitress named, waitress named Rose, 80 years old, Christian woman, told me not to worry, she would teach me how to bartend. She had a story all of her own, how she served God. Did I tell you? Most of our clientele and most wonderful and loving Jewish men and women in the world. I served several of their generations with great stories to tell their kids later on and grandkids. I loved each one of our customers and still do keep in contact with some of them. Many of their children worked for us earning enough money to go to college. It was an open door to minister to all of God's children. I always hoped that someday Debbie would walk in the door and one day surprise me again, but no. Time moved on. There are so many stories, so many prayer groups, different states, miraculous miracles of God along the way. I could speak all day about each and every one of them, perhaps one day, maybe in a book. I just wanted to say that each time I moved, I always looked for women of well beings in my area because I knew that they knew Jesus. I would always find great sisters in Christ, a great church in their area, but most of all, the love of Jesus Christ in each of their hearts. Thank you for listening to the beginning of my prayer journey. I will be 80 this year, and I still expect more signs, wonders, and miracles of God Amen. than the end time harvest. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. I thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart. 